Let me apologize for being a few minutes tardy. I was just coming from a, uh, an appointment myself. Uh, so let the record uh, reflect that we're going to be starting tonight's meeting at uh, 7.37. So we're going to call the meeting to order at uh, 7.37. If you've got uh, cell phones or anything like that, please put them on silent and vibrate so you don't disturb the rest of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Clerk, roll call please. Yeah. Trustee Abraham? Here. Trustee Benson? Present. Trustee Turner? Here. Mayor Jones? Present. Trustee McGreer? Here. Trustee Morris? Trustee Brown Marino? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take a moment of silence. There is an error on the agenda. There will be no swearing in for the new police officer tonight. Agenda item number two, public comment. Uh, public comment. We'll start with uh, Stacy Williams from uh, 19th Avenue. Not sure, right? Yes, yeah. 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 you stand right there. Okay. Um, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I just start by saying I've been a very, very long-term resident of Broadview. I've lived in Broadview since 1996 in two different residences. Uh, my student is a seventh, I have a seventh grade daughter over at Lindock, and I live kind of directly across the street from Lindock, uh, 14th Street, 19th Avenue. Um, big concern about the street there, the actual street, uh, 14th Street uh, between 18th and 19th Avenue is right there by Lindock. Um, the street has gotten much, much worse in the last couple of years. Um, you know, you can't drive through the street without going bump, 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 bump. bump. Um, it's also probably one of the busiest um, side streets in the area, um, as well as there's some safety concerns there for, for kids um, as they leave school, as they go to and from school, and as uh, parents are dropping off their kids um, and the kids are, are walking. Um, so I would, I would really like to request that we look into resurfacing that street um, as soon as humanly possible because I've noticed that there's been a lot of work done over on the other side of Roosevelt um, with the um, closing off the streets over there. Um, and I'm sure that wasn't free. I don't know who pays for the resurfacing of the alley that I've noticed that was resurfaced behind some businesses. The, the hair studio, the nail salon, the Luno, all of that, those alleys were resurfaced uh, recently or redone recently. So I really think because you have so much traffic going through that area by Linda, I would think that that would be a, a pretty important area to have, you know, fixed up and, and looking good and safety. And then on another note, also uh, possibly a speed bump through there. I live right there on the corner. I see people blow past my stop sign all the time. You know, even when, when kids are getting out of school, possibly a speed bump, because we're talking about kids' safety here. Um, people need to slow down. They don't need to drive through there like they're going down the Eisenhower Expressway. Um, so if we could look into that. And then also more street lighting. Um, in the late fall and during the winter months, it gets dark extremely early, sometimes as early as 4.30. I've noticed that it has to be basketball season at the school. My daughter's a basketball player. I'm always nervous about her even coming home after practice because she got folks speeding through there and you can't see, there's no light. So, um, you know, we're talking about the safety of our kids here, the betterment of our village. And um, please, oh, also, just on a side note, Regarding the resurfacing, please don't put any more of the black stuff. I'm not sure what that's called in the holes. That's gone as soon as you do that. That's that's over as soon as you done that. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your Thank consideration. You. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, Mr. Robert Jones. Hello. I'd like to you here to briefly explain the litigation of the uh, of the strip club, if you can, because of the last month. Strip club litigation. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Jansen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I think we need to do some 
create some ordinances and different ordinances and stuff building because of the different people that are moving in and bringing their environment with them. Yes. And we're having a lot of problems with our new neighbors. Uh, when I woke up Thursday morning at 5.30, uh, the people down the street, like seven houses down, were standing out in front of the house, cursing like a sailor that's gonna woke me up. So they play basketball half of the night, and you can hear that. So I think it's because they're coming into the village and bringing the city with them. We don't have the audience to correct some of the things that they're doing and it's making our village look bad. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Gordon. <laughs> uh, I just noticing on the one list, the extensive attorney fees and legal fees that were made that are generated from both the strip club activity and also left over from the uh, other things that had occurred due to one of the trustees causing some issues with the village. I'm hoping that those fees will start to go down soon. I'm hoping that things will be taken care of with that. I'm hoping that a resolution would come that would make sure that strip club stays out of our community. Also, I would hope that if the budget has not been passed yet, it hasn't passed. No, we actually have a budget um, uh, hearing coming up, so right. you know, that should be posted. And I would hope that uh, if any trustee has an issue with making sure that these bills are paid, that they're not accepting a paycheck for this time period as well, because that's certainly under the budget. So you can't accept money on one hand and deny other people their pay for services rendered on the other. And by the way, I wanted to commend the uh, uh, Public Works Department and the Building Department for the vacant properties. Uh, I noticed that many of those lots have been cut and have been maintained properly, and that's very nice, but I did know this one did one that uh, I think it's a vacant property because the grass is starting to get high on 15 Avenue. So I'll talk to Mr. Upshaw later about yeah. that address. Uh, just provide the address. We'll, we'll get out there. Okay, that's all I have for the public comments, Mr. Clerk. Uh, my response to this will be given my report a little later on in the meeting, so I'll, I'll address each and every one of these items, okay? Mr. Clerk? Agenda item number three, consideration to approve the following minutes, July 15, 2013. Has everyone seen the minutes? Has, has, yes. any, has anyone not seen the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes with corrections. Second. Okay, it's been motioned by Trustee Marino to approve the minutes with uh, corrections. You want to identify the corrections, Trustee Marino? Well, um, under the, uh, on the first page at the bottom, consideration to approve the June 17th minutes. Uh, the discussion just says the board requested a verification of attendance, which is true. But I had also asked that uh, the minutes be amended uh, to reflect my comment having to do with the uh, uh, payment, paying the bills. I haven't seen the, any revised minutes. And then also under payment of the bills, I'd like it to include that the reason that I'm saying nay is because we don't have a budget in place, don't have the authority. And then there was another comment made regarding the June, 15, uh, June 17th minutes by Trustee McGreer um, that there was a question about whether or not I was uh, cashing my paychecks in light of that. And I have not been. May, June, July, I have not been cashing my paychecks. So let's put that whole thing to rest. Uh, unfortunately, that was not part of the minutes from, uh, from that meeting because that was not how it was presented. Is there any other correction? Not that I have. Okay. Uh, Ms. Benson, did you have a correction? Ms. Oh, oh, okay. oh. Yeah, she, she brought it to my That's What's her name? Yeah. I guess this is... Page two. Page two. Page two. Okay. And the top, consideration to approve expenditures. I wasn't a part of it at all. I motioned it. Yeah. 
I wasn't part of the motion for the second. So we need to figure out who I motioned it. I motioned it and Trustee McGreer uh, seconded it. So those are the corrections for that. Okay. Yeah, so Trustee Benson's not part of it. I made the original motion, clerk, and then it was, it was seconded by Trustee McGreer. Okay. So we don't have to go through this in the next board meeting. All right. Uh, you should have been notified of the errors last week. You know when you created the, uh, the minutes, and then we wouldn't have to go through. This. Okay. Uh, so let let the record reflect. We got two corrections. Uh, the one made by uh, Trustee uh, Brown Marino as it relates to uh, to uh, the, 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 the bottom of page one uh, consideration to approve this uh, June seventeenth minutes. Uh, where she says that it uh, should be amended to reflect uh, her comment about paying the bills and the reason was no budget. And the second uh, correction from uh, Trustee uh, Abraham and Trustee uh, Benson uh, as it reflects who made the motion and who made the second on uh, that agenda item. And also the com uh, amending the comments under that agenda item about the expenditures. Excuse me. It, I, I was saying it's in two places. It's in two places. Right, approval of the minutes, but also the same comment under um, approving the expenditures. Under approving the expenditures. So uh, please uh, correct the minutes, get them to the uh, trustee. With, with that being said, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Hearing no opposition, the minutes are approved with those uh, corrections identified. Mr. Clerk? Okay, item number four consideration to approve expenditures, grand total funds. $529,296.76. Motions are approved. Second. Okay, so the proper motion by Trustee Abraham is probably seconded by Trustee McGuire to approve these expenditures. Uh, can we have a report from the Finance Department on the larger bill? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for AT&T, it was $9,141.65. For BNF Technical Gold Service, it was $5,271.5. Blue Cross, Blue Shield, $116,517.42. Uh, Broadview Public Library, $11,971.99. Broadview Westchester Joint Water Agency, $127,118.58. Bush Lawn Service, $2,890. Group Industries Inc. $62,939.08. Delgado Law Group, $7,220.36. Geno's Heating and Plumbing, $39,715. Guardian Life Insurance, $7,710.36. The Law Offices of Philip Fornero, $26,427. MFA Construction, $8,531.48. Attorney Michael R. Connolly, $3,825. <clears throat> Ozinga Ready Mix Concrete, $2,678. Petroleum Technologies Equipment, $2,760. Robert Sip, $18,000. 
Sheeman Nurseries, $4,676.80. Tesco Associates Incorporated, $6,592.50. THR Property, Illinois LP, $5,000. The West Cook County Solid Waste Agency, $8,315.17. Young American Enterprise, $5,000. The sum total of all vendors over $2,500 is $482,368.64. For the total expenditures of $529,296.76, the percent of total is 91%. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Questions, corrections, or comments from the members of the board as relates to these uh, particular employees, starting with Trustee Ron Marino. Well, just that we still don't have a budget, we still don't have the authority to spend uh, money, and actually we have also gone past the first uh, three months of the new fiscal year, which was what was argued to me was allegedly allowed. So. We're really late on this, but no, that that's all. Okay. So the uh, trustee boards, let the record reflect the trustee boards uh, arrived at tonight's board meeting at 7.45 p.m. No, I have no comment. Excuse me? No comment. No comment. Okay, thank you, trustee boards. Trustee McGrath. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, if I could address the finance chair. I have a real concern with the uh, huge amount of bills from the law offices of Phil Fernaro. Uh, Trustee Abraham, have you had a chance to analyze why these bills uh, for Fernero are so high? Yes, I have. Mr. Mayor, do you want me to comment on that now? Or do you want me to wait? Well, let, let, let it get through with the rest okay. of the other comments. That's, that's the only real concern. Okay. So if that's the only comment that you have, I'll let the, the finance chair uh, respond. Thank you. Yes, uh, I did look at the two invoices. There was two. Uh, they were dated as May and June. Um, I did speak to the law office of Phil Fernero is here today also, and he can uh, concur with what uh, we looked through with these invoices. Uh, the April invoices were uh, based on subpoenas by objections to our candidates. Um, there was also a question of residency of one of the trustees, so this was obviously an ongoing continuation from the challenges. Uh, the main invoices were, again, residency matters, again, regarding the trustee. There was also uh, lawsuit issues by Maxine Johnson uh, against the village. Excuse me, one second. When you said residency, uh, which residency was being challenged? Uh, trustee Benson. And by, by whom? Yes. By whom? Uh, it was a, there was a request uh, made to determine the residency of um, the trustees. Um, at that point, the village was obligated to move forward with the question of the hearing process. If it wasn't brought up, we'd like to have had to you know, address it, but because it was a situation, it was part of the original election that brought up after the fact to determine whether the president was a resident of the village um, that was instituted by uh, Trustee Brown Marino. And uh, then, as you know, we had that, that hearing process in which there was an opportunity for Trustee Benson to provide her uh, evidence of residency, and then people had the opportunity to object or provide evidence. because we're spending an awful lot of money on things that we normally would not have. And this, it seems kind of ridiculous to me that this kind of money is being spent on attorney fees and um, ridiculous requests like this from one person. And um, we a real concern with that. Thank you for your explanation. Okay, uh, Trustee Tom. Um, it bothers me that every meeting we come in certain trustees worried about a budget. They weren't worried about a budget with all these attorney fees. So why worry about a budget? Now if we had a budget, we blew it. I'm done. Uh, I don't think I should have a comment, so no comment tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 
again, obviously, you know, we uh, scrutinize our bills to the residents, and, and the questions on the legal fees are obviously an issue. Uh, I mean, there is other attorney fees on here as well. They're being driven by another outside source. But I think uh, Mr. Fernando does, does a good job. It, it's a shame that we had to spend it on stuff after the election, as you know, as well as stuff that was ruled at the, the board at that time, or that group that was running was allowed to run, was elected, but yet we had to sit and go through, again, wasting money for no reason. They were elected by the people for the people, so you voted them in, you know, to be challenged like that and to cause additional legal fees is just, it's irresponsible. Well, I, I got a question. Did you analyze what percentage of those fees were related to the elections or the challenges in the appeals? Uh, that I did not get with him on that. Uh, maybe you can report what percentage of uh, those invoices were related to the elections in the appeals. Just so that everyone knows, we had uh, two invoices uh, stemming from uh, objections to candidacy and residency issues as related to the uh, April 2013 elections. Uh, those uh, objections and uh, uh, issues were brought forth by one of the trustees the system of the now and also some outside individuals. And in order to protect the village from uh, further lawsuits and, and some other issues as related to the clerk's office and some actions that were taken by the clerk, the village had to expend uh, additional resources to defend them. Uh, along with the Chicago Joe's issue, just so that you all know, the Chicago Joe's is a, a pending uh, litigation matter as it relates to a, a strip club trying to come to the building building. It's been in the court system since 2007. Uh, they're at the deposition stages now, and if anyone's ever gone through a deposition, you know how long it takes to to, to get the polls and what the expense is as it relates to uh, court stenographers, court reporters, you know, uh, taping of it, the attorney fees uh, for the attorney sitting there doing the questioning, you know, and paralegals and, and the research all that's all involved with it as it relates to discovery and all these other issues are related to litigation in general. Uh, it is unfortunate that, that uh, we inherited the litigation uh, to this degree, but it is what we have and we've gone this far, we, we, we gotta see it through to the end. Otherwise, the, the alternative is to give up and just allow the strip club to be down the street. So, uh, and that's unfortunate. So uh, I don't have any questions. I know where, where the uh, history of the legal fees came from and what's going on with it. And, uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, with that being said, uh, Mr. Clerk, we got a motion on the floor to approve the uh, uh, payment of the bill as, as presented. Uh, and with that being said, I'll, I'll take a roll call on this as it relates to money. Trustee Abraham. Yes. Trustee Benson. Yes. Trustee Turner. Yes. Trustee Missouri. Yes. Trustee Moore. Yes. Trustee Brown Reed. No. And that motion carries five to one. Next item on the agenda reports from the village officers that uh, the, those reports will be given next month. Item number six communications. Um, we have three communications. First of all, um, from Danny K. Uh, Davis's uh, seventh district office. We'll have his seventh congressional district, uh, Broadview Westchester uh, Town Hall meeting, Wednesday, August 17th at 7 p.m. and the Village of Westchester in the Council Chambers. Again, uh, Danny Davis will have his Town Hall meeting Wednesday, August 14th at 7 p.m. at the Westchester Chambers. Oh, August 14th. August 14th. August 14th. Okay, another item from uh, from the office of Danny K. Davis. We'll have this 2013 Back to School Picnic and Pride, Saturday, August 17th, in 2013. It will be in Columbus Park. Um, and again, Danny K. Davis will have his 2013 Back to School Picnic uh, and, and Parade, uh, Saturday, August 17th, 2013. One more item, uh, communication is from the uh, um, it says, on behalf of the Proviso Township uh, Mental Health Commission, uh, they're cordially inviting citizens uh, to their um, Proviso Public Partnership Golf Hour. And that is August 20th, 2013, and it's at the Bloomingdale Golf Course. Again, that is uh, the Proviso Township Mental Health Commission, uh, Proviso Public uh, Partnership on, uh, Golf Outing, and that again is August 20th at the Bloomingdale Golf Course. 
That concludes the announcements, Mayor. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Item number seven, new business. A, consideration of an ordinance approving the execution of an employment agreement uh, for Chief of Police Lewis C. Tagera for the Village of Broadview, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Motion to table. Okay. Okay, it's been motion to table this agenda item by Trustee Morris and second by Trustee Turner. All in favor of the table? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing all opposition, that agenda item will be tabled until the next board meeting, which is two weeks from today. Mr. Clerk? Next agenda item, new business. A, consideration of an ordinance providing for certain changes of fees with regard to the collection of solid and recyclable waste in the village of Broadview, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, uh, this agenda item has been motioned to approve by Trustee McGreer and second by Trustee Abraham. Uh, Trustee McGreer, this is your department. You want to tell us what you got? Well, basically, residents, um, the village of Broadview has increased uh, or has had our garbage rates increased every year by group industries, three to five percent. That's what's in the contract. And for the last few years, uh, Broadview has not passed along that cost to the residents. Um, 2010 is the last increase that we've had for our garbage rate. So with that being said, um, the village cannot continue to eat those increases alone. We're going to pass those through. The same amount that, that we get increased by group, we're going to pass it right through to the residents. So now, in order to be brought up to speed, we're going to increase the garbage rates uh, from the current rate um, by 8%. And it comes out to roughly a little bit more than the dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know, I know. I, I let, me, let me share this with you all. Just so that you know, Root has raised the rates on their garbage 9% in the same time period. And we have not raised the rate in the budget program. At this, at this point in time, the garbage fund is uh, upside down. Uh, we're actually spending more money to collect the garbage than we're collecting to collect the garbage. So the amount of money we spend and we pay the group exceeds the amount of money we collect from the residents and the businesses to uh, pick up the garbage. And this is only just to balance it out. We're not trying to make any money. All we're trying to do is collect what we're actually spending on the garbage collection. So that's that's the reason for this. And, and it's unfortunate. And, and at 8%, it's about a dollar well. It's, a, it's roughly a little bit over a dollar. Yeah, so it's a little bit more than a dollar. So. They've got a contract, and in their contract, that they have uh, automatic uh, in pay increases based on CPI, and they have a minimum increase of three percent. It's an exactly a dollar thirty increase from sixteen twenty eight currently to seventeen dollars and fifty eight cents. So a little bit more. This is part of the Mayor. This is part of that uniform ordinance that we passed way back when just to make sure we have the, the, the bids, the consistent bids for all the village right. to make sure that uh, you know, everyone was picking up the garbage. And yeah, but we didn't, we didn't incorporate that in the original ordinance, the, the, the fee structure as it relates to what we were really charging for the service. It wasn't in the original uh, ordinance. For the past year is what I'm talking about. The past, which is why we're here now. Right. Okay. Uh, comments from the members of the board, starting with uh, Trustee Marino. Well, I challenge the idea that we need to do this. Um, our garbage fund has been really strange over the last uh, year and a half. We added the multifamily properties in to, uh, fiscal year 2012, and our total. Uh, no, we're talking about whether or not we need to raise the, the rates right. in, this gar in the garbage fund. It relates to this particular uh, and that's what I, garbage fund, right? Excuse yeah. me, Mr. Attorney, that's exactly what I'm discussing right now. Okay. So, in the budget that was passed for the fiscal year that just ended, we were projecting an excess of $198,000. Now, when it comes to the multifamily, and all of this is within the same fund, the garbage fund. Our garbage fund is, is a special fund that's set up 
just to put the revenue in and pay the expenses out of. The, we don't have any kind of um, vehicles or capital projects or anything like that that we need to fund. It's sort of a pass-through account. When we were projecting the $198,000 excess last year, I questioned if we are looking at that kind of excess, we have a reserve, we need to re-examine what we're charging the multifamily property owners. And somehow, we went almost $250,000 over budget last year <coughs> in the garbage fund with no explanation for it. I started discussing this with uh, Finance Director Jan Baptiste. She doesn't have an explanation. And now that the mayor has allowed us to speak with her, I'm trying to get a, a time to sit down with her to go over the details of this. <coughs> it, until we know how we spent 250000 more than was budgeted, and this is another problem with the budget, you know. This was at the same time that the trustees were no longer, as, as I finally got the monthly budget versus actual reports. We're sort of going off the no, we're not, because my point is, my, my point is, it, all of this has to do with the garbage fund. Now, when I first questioned, back when, in 2011, when we established the rates for the multifamily property owners, and I questioned the uh, finance director and the budget officer, I was told that we were doing this to build up the reserves to offset the money that was spent in fiscal year 2011 for the excess garbage pickup after the flood, and that it would also allow us to not have to raise rates on the residents that we're showing this kind of a profit because we are making a profit of four dollars per month per apartment unit or per, per unit so a six flat we're getting another twenty four dollars a month in profit and all of that led to this build up and now somehow we spent that money my point is and and this is why all of this comes back to this ordinance right here until we know un specifically where that money went and why why we suddenly had this great big boost in uh, garbage expenses, I don't see a reason to be charging the uh, residents more money. Okay, Trustee Moore, is that it? Yes. Trustee Morris. Well, I know when I seen it, the first thing that came to my mind is, you know, you, you figure that we trying to get a residence a break by not passing on the cost every time we get it but then it ends up now we got to give up eight percent so i said that when we got the cost that we should have been passing it along and then people could just eat on it slowly so you know but this is what happened you know you know um trustee brown marino speaks about not passing the cost on and she was the biggest um, advocate for passing the water rate increase on to the residents so that no. we could do certain no. things. No, uh, I, w I was, I was vehemently opposed to that. You were not interrupting the comment. Let, let the trustee get his comment out. Would help if he told the truth. So we can have certain projects taken care of under, under that budget. So bottom line is um, we need to pass the cost alone to the residents. I'm a resident, we, I have to pay it just like everyone else does. And it's not like we're picking on anyone in particular. So rather than to have the, the fund upside down as it is, we need to make sure that we're healthy as far as that fund and all other funds that we have um, irresponsibly collected and passed through costs to the residents. That's my point. <coughs> uh, when will this take effect? I don't remember. When will the breaks go up? There was no date certain on the increase of the rates of the guys. If I can give you a contact, that's once we've passed. Any other questions? No, sir, I'm not. Trustee Benson? Well, I don't remember all the specifics of the contract that we can totally monitor the contract. But my question is, when did you all remember how long the contract took? I'm sorry. I'm asking the board, if any of them remember how long this contract that we currently have is for. It's coming up for renewal. It's coming up for renewal. Um, 
My understanding was that it was originally until 2015, but then the board passed a three-year extension to 2018. Comparative analysis on the contracts. 
the group contract was lower than two thirds of all other contracts, like contracts for similar municipalities. What has happened is West Central Solid Waste increased the amount, the, the cost per ton for, for dumping into their uh, site. Uh, they increased uh, by, by a ton, uh, and I don't even recall the exact amount of the increase from uh, West Central, but their cost increased, and they don't have a contract, it's just what we dump. So the cost per ton increased, and the amount of tonnage that we put in increased. So the cost per ton increased, and the amount that we dump in there increased, that increased. <laughs> Roots got an automatic 3% uh, built in, that increased it. And then you add in there the fuel surcharge on it, that increased it. So while we tried not to, and we lasted as long as we could by not passing on any calls to the residents to see if we could do anything else to try to uh, reduce or at least flatline the costs in the interim, we were not able to do that. We don't have any other choice but to raise it. Otherwise, we've been raising it, you know, three to three and a half percent just about every year for the last three. And we're going up eight percent, which is not even the full nine percent. So uh, that's where we're at right now. Um, as it relates to uh, the, the expenditures in the garbage fund, uh, there's only one new trustee on this board since 2011. During the time that these expenditures were incurred, none of these board members raised a whole lot of sand in any board meeting as we were passing the payments on on all of these uh, uh, waste <coughs> and removal uh, expenses. So when we made root every month for their uh, all the way, we paid West Central for their collection of, of the solid waste. There were no objections from trustees, from uh, Trustee Marino all the way to Trustee Abraham uh, to challenge this expense and say that this expense is over, over, over the top, it's too much, it's extravagant. There was never a question like that from 2011 until today. Now today, because we're gonna go back and, and say, hey, listen, we, we need you to pay the rest of the money so that we can you know, flatline this and, and just balance the sheet. Now they want to go back and say, well, I've been saying this for however long it's been, and I'm challenging this, this, this amount of money, but nothing has been said for the last 24 months uh, about it. And, and that's, you go over the minutes of the board meetings and the approval of, of the payment of the bills and you'll see that. You know, there may have been one discussion about it at one point in time, but after that, there were no more discussions. So, and, and that's what you need to know that those of you that haven't been coming to the board meetings uh, every week or every other week, twice a month, you wouldn't know, but I'm just here to let you know that that's, that's a reality. Uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, I'll take um, Excuse me. No, you're excused. No, Mr. now Mr. that, Clerk, now that everyone has had, Clerk, now that everyone has had an opportunity Clerk, to speak, uh, no, I would like to the opportunity to make another comment. You had your opportunity, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Clerk no, that is not Robert's so rules of order. Listen, there's only one person to speak at the time. The chairman controls the, the meeting, he calls the uh, calls the roll, the roll, and the call. The Point of order. This is not following Robert's rules of order. Absolutely, have to call the roll. Trustee Abraham. Yes. You're afraid Trustee to have Abraham. me speak again. Yes. Trustee Turner. Yeah. Trustee McGreer? Yes. Trustee Moore. Yes. Trustee Brown. Raymond. Absolutely not. And the motion carries four to two. Item uh, new mm -hmm. business. Uh, item C consideration of an ordinance authorizing and approving an extension of the 2012 agreement with Municipal Collections of America regarding the provision of collection services for the village of Broadview, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Motion to approve. Second. Probably motion by Trustee McGreer, probably second by uh, Trustee Abraham. Um, Mr. Morris, I believe this is yours. What is that? <laughs> it's, the, it's the collection. Do you, you want to talk about it, Mr. Chief? Yeah. Sure. This is the uh, collection agency that. Uh, I thought we already passed that was approved last year. It's a token for municipal recovery. In one year, they collected between forty-five and fifty thousand dollars, compared to the uh, municipal recovery that only recovered thirteen thousand dollars in 2008 and 2012. In addition to that, we, uh, because of what municipal collections did, they made a a contract or an agreement with the Secretary of State for those individuals that do not pay, there's a driver's license will be suspended. And I believe last month 
It also, this board approved an MOU uh, memorandum of understanding with the controller's <coughs> office. So now uh, we will uh, also, when it's tax time, try to get the controllers to right. uh, some of that money as well. So they've done an excellent job. Uh, I support them and I recommend that the board uh, approves it. Okay. Uh, for those of you that haven't been come to the board meetings, and I don't know if you all heard the chief, we changed our collection agency a year ago. Uh, they've done a great job. They, they increased our collections by about 300 percent. And in the meantime, we've gone through some uh, additional measures to try to make sure that we collect the revenues for those outstanding tickets that we have that are out there. Uh, it includes uh, going after the state taxes, and it includes uh, challenging driver's licenses uh, for those funds. So, just so that you all know that we're, we're basically catching up to speed with everybody else, including the city of Chicago, cities like Cicero, and some other towns that have similar organizations. Uh, questions and comments from the members of the board, starting with Trustee Marino. I do have a question. Uh, attached at the end of the uh, uh, agreement with Municipal Collections of America is a page talking about the Operation Bootlock program to boot. Uh, people with delinquent parking fines. Um, Chief Tagera, I don't know if you know or if anyone else would know, how many tickets, how many outstanding tickets does a person have to have before they would go on the boot uh, list? Great Chief, you can answer. Uh, I, do, I do believe you passed this ordinance a while back. I don't, I don't know if it's three or five. It was, it was reduced to three, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. The number originally was five, and I think we reduced it to three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Boyd? No, I'm not. Trustee McGrath? No. Trustee Turner? No. Trustee Benson? No. And Trustee Adrian? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, the motion carries to uh, extend the contract with the Municipal Collection of America. Next item for new business D. Consideration of a motion approving the intention of the police department to hire two police officers for the village of Broadview, County of Cook, State of Illinois. Motion to approve. Second. Probably motion by Trustee Morris, probably second by Trustee McGreer. Mr. Morris, you, you want to talk about this one? Mm, no. You know what's going on? You want the chief to talk about it? You want me to talk about it? Definitely. We got, we got uh, two officers that are going to be leaving us. Uh, one's already submitted his retirement, the other one is. Uh, sitting in front of the pension board to determine what level uh, his pension is going to be on his disability retirement. And this is just to replace those two officers at this time. Uh, is there anything else? I think that's about cut and dry as it can be. That's correct. You know, uh, Officer Billy Lyles, uh, who though many of you know has served the village of Broadview for some uh, 26 or 27 years. Uh, is uh, permanently disabled, he will not be coming back and he is uh, retired. Uh, Sergeant Daryl Miller uh, sustained a back injury uh, while he was here and he's tried everything he can do, including having uh, back surgery to get back to uh, full duty as an officer. Uh, right now he's got a case pending in front of the pension board uh, for disability retirement and they're just they're waiting on some more information to make a final determination on him but he's not coming back. So uh, this is just to approve us to go on and uh, uh, accumulate two more police officers to replace these two guys that are leaving. Uh, it won't be done right away because we can't technically uh, replace Daryl until this situation is finalized. But this will put us in position that as soon as it's finalized that we can go on and move forward and, and put a police officer in place. That being said, questions or comments, and Chief is here to answer questions and comments. Uh, the attorney can answer to it. Uh, as relates to this, uh, starting with Trustee Marino. I don't have any. Trustee Moore? No. Trustee McGear? No. Trustee Time? Will the new officers, will they be, uh, what do you call it, boots on the ground, be ready to go? Or will they have to go to the academy for training or whatever? The officer that is going to be replacing Officer Lyles will be sworn in on the 19th as boots on the ground. He's already a certified officer. The officer that's going to be replacing Sergeant Miller, that individual is not a certified officer. That individual will be going to the College of Page Academy in September. So we're going to uh, request us, or we're going to swear her in to be a female. We're going to request her to be sworn in uh, on her box September. Did I hear that right? Our first female officer? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Carrying on the ayes have it. And uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item, Mr. Clerk. Item B, e, consideration of a business license application for a lucky dog. Take a motion to approve. Second. Okay, there's been a motion by Trustee uh, Madison and second by Trustee Turner to approve the business license application for lucky dog. Trustee Benson. Okay, uh, everyone. Hopefully you all make your meet. I got the highest. Okay, I got Lucky Dog. Uh, Lucky Dog is going to be at 1201 West Sarmac. I have all their inspections, including the health department inspection, is done. It took, uh, they originally put this application back in in April, but we had to wait until the health inspection uh, was done, which was done rather recently. Uh, we got copies and proof of SGIN, state sales tax, so we got an article of incorporation here. I've I read through this packet already. Uh, and Lucky Dog is a restaurant. You can go and get a hot dog. So that's all I got to say about Lucky Dog. This has, if you go to me and go, are, are any of them here tonight? Right. Lucky Dog is here? All right. All right. Yeah. Questions or comments from the members? I'll continue when you guys get finished. Questions or comments from the members of the board staff and trustee women? Um, just that I'm glad to see that you're going to be open real late. Um, be nice to have a place to run out and get a Euros or sandwich real late. So, and you're right in my neck of the woods. So, welcome. All right, Trustee Moore. No. Trustee McGreer. Um, if voted in, welcome to Broadview. Trustee Turner. Yes, you know. No, welcome. Trustee Vincent. I was just saying, if voted in, welcome to Broadview. Trustee Abraham. No. And I'm glad to see you guys are here too. I've been going to Lucky Dog for over 30 years. I used to deliver the mail to you guys when I was a carrier, you know. Uh, both sides, I've, I've been to both sides and you guys take uh, vacation restaurants. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in approval on that one. Uh, both of one on Lake Street and one on Harlem Avenue. So uh, welcome to Broadview, see you guys over there. If I have any, uh, no more questions or comments from the board, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hey, man, uh, welcome to Broadway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have consideration of the business license application for Mirage Freight Systems Incorporated. I make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, it's probably motioned by Trustee Vincent, probably seconded by Trustee Aram for Mirage Freight. Trustee Vincent. All right. Well, I'm still taking my Mirage Freight System Incorporated is going to be located at 1833 Gardner Road. Um, they will just be utilizing this particular building for warehouse needs. Now, I was not able to get in contact with this particular company prior to see, to see exactly what they do. So I don't know. But, Thank God Dave is here because yeah. he can ask you. Yeah, let's, let's defer to the building. Dave, you want to tell them about what Mirage is doing? What do they do? Mirage uh, Freight Systems is a company that's headquartered out of Los Angeles, California, and they have purchased, or, or I should say, a uh, piece of space in the warehouse in Broadview, and it's kind of like a uh, what would be the right word for it? Where they, where they can drop off uh, freight. That, well, I'm not what they're doing. Yeah, that's pretty much really that's what they're doing. Like a transportation. Or more of a transportation. It's like a hub for them. Uh, 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 that they want in the Midwest and they brought them and in the space. Yeah. What's we'll 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 significant in terms of what they want? More like a distribution. Okay. So basically, I just want you all to know exactly what they did. But what they'll be doing here is warehousing, which is what they have written here. <laughs> Um, they have all their inspections done, health inspection and so forth they need it. Uh, they have proof of the SEIN number in here. 
and it came with their leaks, so they gave me a lot of stuff here. Uh, some of this stuff is not required, but I applied that they gave it to us. That's all I have to say about this particular business. Yeah, it's inside a sketch of their I don't see anybody. That includes my report regarding this business. Okay. Thank you, uh, Trustee Benson. Uh, questions, comments for uh, the building commissioner or the Trustee Benson as it relates to uh, great systems of Trustee Brown Marina? None. Trustee Moore? No. Trustee Madrid? None. Trustee Trump? None. Trustee Benson? None. Trustee Adrian? None. And I have none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Mary none. Welcome to Raj Freeze. Mr. Clerk. Item number eight, application for the authority to expend funds $61,620. Prime Attempt Services Group Incorporated $17,520. BNF Technical Code Service $27,000. Rick Dan Dan $15,000. Widgets Truck Center $2,100. I tell you what I will do uh, because there's uh, four different items. I'll accept a motion on each one independently. Uh, a motion on climate tent service group in the amount of seventeen thousand five hundred twenty dollars. Any motions up for a second? Okay. The motion by Trustee Abraham to approve the expenditure of the climate tent service group incorporated for seventeen thousand five hundred twenty dollars. Uh, who's reporting that one? You? I did. You want to report to you? Want to know what happened? I know You want to report to you? Okay. That's the compressor that was broken on the uh, east side with the air condition. And to replace the compressor, it cost $17,000. Um, in addition to the 17, or not in addition to the part of the 17, was a uh, warranty as well. <coughs> we will now air conditioning for, I believe, two weeks when it was 80 to 90 degrees. Finally, we have the, uh, the compression the engine has been problematic for several years, going back a while. They had uh, patchworked it for a while. They kept putting Freon in it every year. And, kept, and we kept incurring uh, expenses of four, five, and six thousand dollars a pop. So if we were going to do that, we might as well bite the bullet and spend the money one time and not have to go back. That was, that was the thought process. Uh, questions for the chief or uh, for myself, if you, if you want to ask me about it. Um, I don't think anybody else is involved with that one. So you and I, chief. Right. If you did get uh, several polls on it uh, before we set on final attempt, I will let you know that. And he does have those in his office available for the viewer if you need to see him. So, so we ask for, excuse me? The, uh, the compressor came with the building. Yeah. It's been it's been there for twenty some years. And and Climate Temp has a contract, and they do uh, seasonal inspections on the uh, system. Uh, question coming from members of the board, uh, Trustee <coughs> Um This is work that has been done, though, right? Yes. Okay, good. It's and fine. other than that, my standing about not having the authority to spend money. Right. Trustee Moore. No. Trustee McGree? No. Trustee Turner? No. Trustee Benson? No. Trustee Avery? No. Mr. Uh, Clerk, I have a roll call on item number one. Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Benson? Yes. Trustee Turner? Yes. Trustee McGree? Yes. Trustee Morris? Yeah. yeah. Trustee Brown Marino? Regretfully, I have to vote no. Regretfully, okay. Well, regretfully, I have to say that that actually passed by the one. <laughs> so, uh, we'll be paying for the uh, service. <coughs> Mr. Clerk, let's go to uh, item number two. I'll entertain a motion on item two, which is BNF Technical Code Service in the amount of $27,000. Make a motion that we approve the BIF Technical. Oh, sorry. Second. Okay, motion by Trustee Turner, second by Trustee Benson uh, to approve the expenditure for BNF Technical. Kevin, is with you? Uh, Nicole. Nicole, um, Building department, so this is me, or whoever does building and property. Oh, that's me. So, you want to take this one? I take the next one? No. One Go right of, ahead. Right one of these. Uh -huh. All right, so what this is, is uh, an invoice for being out of technical. Um, to 
not to exceed 12,000 for the first deal, which is plumbing, and not to exceed 15,000, which is the second deal, which is electric attached to the PO, is the proposal for plumbing inspection and plan review, <coughs> electrical inspections, and I'm oh, sorry, and plan review for the building department. Now, currently, we already have the enough technical uh, doing inspection services for us for the plumbing. Am I correct? Yes. What we're doing is we're going to be adding electrical on. So they'll be doing plumbing and electrical inspections for us. So it's not like what we're doing here is we're trying to, um, the word I'm looking for is renew the contract plus we're adding something else for them to do. Now, I have a side note question for the attorney. Can I ask that before I go on? Sure, you can. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can repeat it once well, I get an well, answer. Well, 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 you don't have to debate it. Just ask the question out loud so everybody can hear it. Just, well, I want just, you just to be hear clear about it. Can we do this in this particular form? Or can we just do it as a regular ordinance like we've done other things? Like, like this in the past? If it's a new contract, typically we do it and have done it in the past in the business section. Because oh, it's a renewal but we're adding a electrical. So I, I haven't seen that, that portion right there. Look at sure. it. It's, it's contractual. Typically we do it by ordinance so it's consistent. All right, right. I want to make sure that we are doing it in the correct order, in yeah, the correct format. So what I asked him, everybody, was should we be doing this through an ordinance like we just, you know, voted on everything else or should we be doing it through the authority to spend funds like a purchase order agreement? It's those two are kind of separate, and I thought maybe we should be doing it like you said on the new business. But he wants to look at it to determine which way we're supposed to vote this in. So it's not like we're doing something bad. We're just trying to figure out where exactly on this agenda it should be placed. Yeah, this, look, this looks like a, a, a contract to perform services. I don't know if this is consistent. We did, we did a contract similar to this, which I don't know if this is going to be exactly the same. I know we made a lot of changes on the BNM technical last, last time in the room. Mm -hmm. I prefer to review the contract before we sign them. Mm -hmm. um, and consistent with what we talked about, uh, it probably should be a new business. Okay, if, so if the village wants to pass that, um, I guess they can pass it subject to my review and uh, subject to yeah, so it's my review and I'll take a look at it and I'll take changes that are contributed to the but I mean, well, I'm, to be quite honest, I'm really okay with making a superseding motion and take one in. I would second that if you feel that way. Okay. Um, and one more question, since we're just going to do again. I will just save that question for the next thing that we're going to talk about. But everything else, I'll just finish my comment regarding it. Um, it looks like the fee structure is about the same. We're just adding electrical services on here as I read this contract. I do see some new stuff that I did have a question on, and this is regarding inspections performed with the other village of Rocky inspectors. I don't really know what that means, so of course I'll be asking for clarification on that. Um, do we have a motion on this? Yeah, I made the motion. <coughs> to the table or to To approve. To approve. Mm -hmm. I haven't superseded anything. I'm still giving my explanation to the residents and the board as to what this is. Yeah, that's acceptable. That's acceptable? Yeah, absolutely. It's right. Okay, would you all like me to stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> um, everything else on the agreement, they're giving me their... Yeah, everything else seems the same as the previous agreement that we've already done. I just see a few changes. But if we should be doing this a little differently, we can. We should have a problem with that. Um, Dave, can I defer to you to just add on to or answer any of my questions? Yes. Um, being a technical is currently uh, we're taking care of our plumbing here in the village. Uh, as, I, as I look at the building department and those of you who know uh, how we're properly staffed, I'm looking to increase uh, our staffing in the building department as well as to improve our efficiency to bring in technology and make it run more fit, more effective. In order for me to do that, I'm looking at our staff. Uh, the mayor's giving out the directive, we can't hire them full time, so one of the things that I thought about was contracting. We're currently using BNF for our plumbing services and it's 
inspection services and it's been quite successful. Um, we normally spend about $12,000 a year we run under that in terms of the performing inspections. Um, when I look at the electrical and how much money we were spending versus how much we can save on a current inspection basis, if we get the same rate that we're paying for plumbing, then uh, we would be saving money as well. So that 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 is what that contract is. And some of the items that are in this particular contract, such as uh, uh, joint or going on with group inspections, that means with the building inspector, uh, could, be, could be with the Cook County Health Department. The reason why that I had to add to the contract, because we were, as we have started to do inspections on restaurants, it's a group effort, it's a team effort along with the fire department. And so their themes are all over the place. So I'm just trying to get a fee that's consistent, that's reasonable, and fair to the broad. So that's why I haven't had this to the contract. Uh, outside of that, uh, uh, you know, if the board wants to send it to the attorneys, that's fine. It's a general standard contract. Uh, nothing will be added that I, I think it wants to be reviewed. Uh, we just got to be discussing the legal fees and things of that nature. I think I'm confident enough to, to, to have a general understanding of the basic contract. I know it I know what needs to go to the attorney and I feel comfortable with this particular contract, but it's at the board's discretion and whatever you all decide is what I'll support. Uh, this is just an effort to help streamline uh, the building department and then continue moving forward in a positive direction and improve, improve the staffing and bring in technology and things of that nature where I can focus on the bigger <coughs> ordinances regarding the dogs and noise and things of that nature. All right, and to conclude my comments regarding this particular thing, uh, my main concern was whether or not we were doing it correctly on the agenda. So if we're not, we need just, we need to fix it. We need to get it on here correctly. We need to vote on it the correct way. That was my main concern. I think that's what I started off with. Did I not? Yes. All right. Um, I'll conclude my comments for now so that she can make her. Well, no, we haven't. That was your report. It wasn't comments. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What? No. Oh. No. Well, listen. We, we, we're in discussion, right? Yeah, we are. Oh, okay. I just, right? yeah. just want to make sure, yeah. Right. Listen, for everyone in the room, I just want you all to know that uh, what you see in front of you on this agenda went through the attorney's office and went through the clerk's office. And I apologize to you all for this extended discussion about something that should have had a discussion prior to the board meeting so that the individual signal commission had clarity on it. Uh, the question should have been brought to Dave or to the attorney before coming in here and having you all have to hear this debate, this dialogue about this particular uh, issue. Rick Danden and BNF Technical Code Services uh, right now are going to be part of an outsourcing project in the building department. BNF Technical currently has a contract with the village as it relates to our cross connection operation. <coughs> That's what this is all about. We lost a full-time employee and, and, and his salary and his benefits totaled about $75,000. In doing this in an outsourcing manner, uh, we actually will save the entire $75,000 because it is no longer a, a deficit line item, but a possible, uh, uh, what would you call it, income flow for the village as it relates to individual uh, ex inspections by both Inner Technical and Rick Dan. That being said, and, and having heard all of this information uh, just now, uh, I'll entertain uh, uh, a superseding motion to table both uh, BNF Technical Code Service and Rick Danden until such time that the trustees can get their questions answered and not have you all have to sit here and go through this uh, laborious task of listening to us going back and forth about something that should have been clarified long before we got to this meeting. You know, and that's unfortunate. And I apologize once again for that. You know, the, these questions should have been asked to, the, to these individuals long before now. And the attorney should have uh, corrected it once he got to them and say, listen, this should be an ordinance form as opposed to an application to extend funds. So, uh, can I get a motion to uh, take these two agenda? No, I want to make sure. Is that how it's supposed to be going before I make a proceeding motion that it needs to be independent? Yes, it should be the business. I know. Oh, it should be? It yeah, should absolutely. Be. Oh, it should be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I 
Anybody can make a motion. I make a motion that we table. Yes. Uh, BNF Technical Code and Rick Dan Dan. To the next, to the next board meeting. Second. Okay, a motion by uh, Trustee Turner and second by Trustee Abraham to table these two. And, uh, and the reason I put them together is because they're uh, very similar in nature and they deal with the same issue. Uh, do I have any quite, uh, well, it's motion table. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Mm. Hearing no opposition, these two agenda items will be tabled until two weeks out. Uh, uh, Dave, I would task you with uh, making sure that all the trustees have all the information relative to being at technical and Rick Danning as it relates to the inspection uh, process in your department so that we don't have to go through this on the next meeting. I'll take care of you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next agenda item uh, on here is uh, a, a motion on Widget's Truck Center in the amount of $2,100. Make a motion to approve. Second. That was my motion. Okay. Yeah, I wonder what you're waiting on. Motion by Trustee Abraham, second by Trustee McGreer uh, to approve the expenditure for Widgets Truck Center. Trustee McGreer? Yes, sir. This is uh, to replace this air compressor, air dryer, and the labor for one of our vehicles, number 18. Um, it's basically the air brakes that went out on this, on this uh, vehicle. So number 18. What vehicle? What, what vehicle? Public Works? It's for Public Works, yes. Okay. Public work vehicle number 18 uh, had, had some repairs done on it. Is that correct? The air brakes, right. Okay. Uh, questions and comments from the members of the board? Trustee Marino? No. Trustee Morris? No. Trustee McGill? None. Trustee Turner? No, sir. Trustee Benson? No. Trustee Abraham? No. Mr. Clark, can we have a roll call on Widgets Truck Center in the amount of 2100? Trustee Abraham? Yes. Trustee Benson? Yes. Trustee Turner. Yes. Trustee McGreer. Yep. Trustee Morris. Yes. Trustee Brown Marina. No. Okay, the motion carries five and one to take the air brakes on the uh, public works. Item nine, committee reports. Finance committee, Trustee Abraham. Yes, good evening residents. Uh, one, I want to thank my fellow trustees for meeting with the, the, the department heads as well as our budget officer, uh, Tom Lord, to get closer to uh, getting our budget in place. Uh, I do want to make an announcement that the public notice was served that our budget hearing will be on August 15th, Thursday at 3 p.m. So again, thank you, and that's in my report. Thank you, Trustee Abraham. Next report, Business Committee, Trustee Benson. Uh, just a few um, reminders to everyone. I believe Felix sent the deadline again to the first week of August. Also, the Illinois Hard Hit Program, foreclosure program that you all can get into for mortgage assistance homeowners. Deadline is September 30th. Uh, also, Derby Courts of the County Mortgage Foreclosure Mediation Program that we have. This program just helps homeowners who have been some in court regarding foreclosure of their home. Now the uh, lenders have to pay about 50 to up to $500 for a housing counselor that will help you to save your house. Or if you don't know the assumptions and all that stuff is, they will help you right outside the door of the actual court room you go to. That's what that lender is for. So that whole program is out there just for you. And I actually reported on this a while ago. Uh, I want to tell you all about the fast track foreclosure registration approved. In June, I actually reported on this a while ago too. What this is, it actually helps the villages. When a home is abandoned or when they're terminated abandoned, and if the lenders can realize that that house has been abandoned, they can fast track the foreclosure process so that the house is not sitting there vacant <coughs> forever. And I believe this legislation also raises fees paid by foreclosure lenders on all residential foreclosure filings. That's that 50 to 500 that I was telling you about. And they said that there's also a fee that will provide approximately 28 million to the Illinois Housing Development Authority to make grants to local governments who are struggling with the cost to maintain and secure abandoned properties. So there's also a way for us to try and recoup money as a village uh, on these vacant abandoned properties. Uh, let's see what else I want to tell you all about. 
we had another property tax assessment appeal form. I don't know if Sharma was going to talk about it, but it's Go August ahead. 6th uh, with Larry Rogers, and it is free. It is going to be at the South Shore High School Auditorium. This is out south, 1955 East 75th Street, Chicago. So if you missed the one that was, I believe, at Robert Baptist Church, you got another chance. Uh, I think there was one more thing. Mm, that was it. Thank you, Trustee Benson. Mr. Building and Public Property, Trustee Turner. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I attended the uh, Community Pride, uh, their annual event that they had here this past Saturday here at Village Hall. Uh, Home Depot was here. Uh, a few residents, it was a very low turnout. The uh, firefighters, paramedics here, they were taking blood pressure. We had gifts, they raffled off. Also, uh, they also announced uh, the vial of life. And you can get information about that is on the website or you can go across the street to the fire department. This is where you would have a sticker in your uh, front door and or your back door and it would alert the fire department, like I said, you're on heart medication or that you're prone to seizures. They would, they would know to go to your refrigerator from this red sticker on your door and it would have a list of your medications and your conditions so they would know how to treat you and report it to the hospital. August 24th is a CPR class here. I believe it's from 9 to 11 in the fire department, free of charge. Uh, you will not get a card, but at least you'll know at least how to save somebody's life, how to do the compressions and the brief for them until the uh, firefighter paramedics can get to them, because every second counts. That's it. When was that again? August 24th is a CPR class at the fire department. You need to call and sign up. I think it's like 15 spots yeah. open. Sure. And it's only two hours. And it teaches you how to do the chest compressions and how to breathe for someone until medical uh, emergency can get to them. Every second counts. You breathe for somebody until the, the uh, paramedics can get there and help. That I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Uh, thank you, Trustee Tom. Mr. Clerk. Streets, sidewalks, and alleys, Trustee McGreer. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, trustees, and residents. Mm -hmm. um, not to steal the mayor's thunder, I know he's going to speak on it in his comments uh, regarding some of the public comments earlier, but Ms. Williams early, earlier spoke about street repairs and alley repairs, and uh, one of the annual programs that we have is the CDBG, and that's a grant that uh, allows us to uh, work on certain streets and alleys uh, based on the median income of uh, the families in that area. And it's really based on a census tract. What I hold in my hand is worth $212,000 for next year's program. That's twice the amount that we received last year, and it's gonna allow us to do that much more work. So I think um, with the um, help of uh, Edwin Hancock Engineering, <coughs> And associates, they usually help us determine which areas that we can uh, work on next. And I think 15th Avenue from um, the alley on down the harbor will be taken care of under this grant. So just, just to let you know, there's a methodical uh, way that we go about what we repair. Not to say that the 14th Avenue Street should not have been taken care of long ago. I, I think the mayor's gonna address that, so I'll leave that for him to discuss. But um, I'm happy to announce that we got twice the, the amount this year that we got last year. Um, I'm not sure how many people saw the blinking light on 17th Avenue right by the school on 14th Street. But um, for at least two weeks that I can recall, that light blinked and blinked. It was due to a bad controller box. And generally that's IDOT's um, street but that's Broadview's responsibility. So through some heavy negotiating, um, I could thank our public works director, Matt Ames, and speaking to the representatives that I got and getting the, uh, a tremendous discount on getting that repair. We saved over $7,000 in finally getting that repair. So thank you, Director Ames, for that. Appreciate it. Um, lastly, um, 
I have just a t-shirt that was um, an idea of the Bravi Neighborhood Watch and these t-shirts will be worn to various events, um, various neighborhood outings uh, by the members of Neighborhood Watch and whomever else would like to get a Neighborhood Watch t-shirt. So these are currently on sale through the Broadview Neighborhood Watch. Um, they meet every last Friday right here at Village Hall at 7 p.m. And the t-shirts based on the size that you get are either 12 or $15. If you know someone or if you'd like to purchase one, I'll certainly take your name and phone number today and pass it along to the officer in charge from Broadview Neighborhood Watch and they can place that order for you. Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee McGill. Mr. Clerk, Fire, Police, and Civil Service, Trustee Moore. I have no report. Thank you, Trustee Moore. Mr. Clerk, Water, Drainage, and Health, Trustee Brown Marie. Well, I'd like to follow up with the discussion about the garbage fund earlier, and garbage does fall under water, drainage, and health. <clears throat> because there were a couple of things that were said that are absolutely not true. Uh, first of all, I vehemently opposed the uh, increase in the water rate. I didn't believe that it was necessary at the time, and I'm not going to go any further with that. Um, Budget Director Tom Hood said that we had been showing a deficit for the last couple of years. Actually, I had put together numbers for this discussion. 2009, we had an excess of 60,000 in the fund. 2010, it was 3,000. 2011, there was a deficit because of the, flo uh, the flood and the extra garbage pickup. And then 2012, we had an excess of 60,000. As I said, we had projected an excess of 198. Somehow, we came in with a deficit of 50,000. Um, I will get to the bottom of this. Oh, oh and the, the final thing. Um, Mayor Jones made the comment that no one had been complaining about this as we went along. Well, the reason is because we were not given the information. Um, last August, our, the mayor decided that the finance director could no longer give us the monthly budget versus actual reports. So we had no way of knowing where we were at with the, uh, the various different funds. Um, as far as tr uh, Trustee Judy Abrams' comments, that she wanted, to know, she wanted to get to the bottom of this and why we didn't know. Once the, budget, once the finance director was able to give us the same type of summary reports like she does for the general fund, in January or February of last year, uh, she was finally authorized to give us the same type of summary report for all the other funds. And that was when I first became aware of it and tried to ask her about it, but she was not allowed to speak with trustees at the time. So a lot of these comments that were made about the increase in our garbage rates are just flat out wrong. Um, I will get to the bottom of this. I, now that the ban has been lifted and I can meet with the, the finance director, I will be going over this in detail to understand how this happened and why. Uh, but aside from the fact that we ended up with all these additional expenses, the trustees were not aware of it as it was going on, and I am concerned that our budget officer never raised the alarm that we were going that far over budget in a specific fund. <coughs> and that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Moran. <coughs> I can, Village Clerk, I have no other report beyond the uh, communications I read earlier. Uh, item 11, Village President Sherman Jones. Okay, I got a couple of things. I'm going to address, um, before I get started, did, uh, did all of the trustees check your mailboxes today? You should have a red fold in your mailbox. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's from A&M Auto. They, they've been here before. Uh, I want you all to take a look at it because it will be on uh, the next agenda. So uh, uh, hopefully we won't have a long detailed discussion in front of the public about what the content of this is. We can just uh, discuss it in, in a more general sense. Um, secondly, let, let's talk about some of the comments earlier. Uh, the legal fees. The legal fees are extensive and have been extensive for the Broadway for some years now, largely due to litigation. We've been in court and it's a, a, an exhaustive pro uh, process and it's causing us a lot of angst. So much so that uh, the village board as a whole was sued 
the individual members of the board were sued, the members of the zoning board and the zoning board in itself were sued by this entity, and each one of these different entities has got different legal representation. By law, they, they cannot be represented by the same person. So the members of the board that were, were sued are being represented by the, the Golda Law Firm. Uh, our board is currently represented by uh, Attorney Fernaro and so on and so forth. So that contributes to the, uh, the extensive uh, legal fees uh, incurred by the Dudley Brothers. And those legal fees will continue to go on because we're currently in uh, uh, the process of uh, conducting interviews, uh, depositions from all the individuals, uh, the players involved in this, including uh, Trustee Marino and including other individuals that have knowledge of what went on back in 06 and 07. Um, I don't know how many more we have to depose, uh, Mr. Attorney. I, I'm sure that there's a handful more left yet. Yeah, we'll still have a bunch of uh, before the experts start, so. Before, you, before we talk to the experts, okay. So that's one cost for the extensive uh, legal fees. Uh, the other cost that should go away uh, pretty soon were the expenses uh, as related to uh, the objections and the challenges and the losses from the village clerk and all these other things, these ludicrous things that went on during the last uh, elections. Uh, those should ultimately dissipate and be gone uh, relatively soon. And we'll have a final number on what that cost was at some point in time. And then we'll let you know what that is. Uh, there was a discussion about maintaining vacant properties uh, in town. If you guys identify vacant property and we have not gotten to it, please notify us. We will do it. We put it on a list and uh, we put a lien against the property so we can recoup the expenses that we spend as we maintain these properties. Uh, just want to let you know that. Um, someone um, uh, asked about can we create new ordinances, Ms. Yancey. Uh, we're working on our ordinances. As you know, uh, and we talk about this extensively, some of our ordinances were 35 and 40 years old. We, we were one of the few municipalities in town when we got in, they had five and $10 parking tickets. You know, uh, it, it was just unheard of, you know, some of the things that we had to deal with. Are we aware of our neighbors? Absolutely. Uh, Cul-de-sacs and all those other things are causal uh, because of some of the uh, individuals that have moved into town. And uh, I understand that there are people outside cursing and things like that and literally walking the streets at all hours of night. The police are aware and they're doing some extra patrols and things, but they can't be everywhere. You guys got to let them know. If there's something going on in your neighborhood, you see it, they don't see it, you got to pick up a phone and call. You don't call, they don't know, they can't get out of here. You know, so uh, that's what a strip club litigation is. That's what's going on with the ordinances. We are aware of the neighbors. As it relates to the street in front of school, and as it relates to the cul-de-sacs and uh, the other side of town, uh, Kevin touched on it. What happened is, is the village, depleted their capital fund reserve before we got in. That was part of the huge deficit that we had. They spent all that capital fund money on purchasing the property on Roosevelt Road. We're trying to rebuild that right now, uh, and part of that was the sale of the property to the sign guy. Uh, currently, we got an offer for properties on Roosevelt Road. These, these monies are gonna go back into that capital fund, and that's what's gonna fund the, the repairs and reconstructions of your streets over there. And what we do with that is we identify the streets that have the most critical issues in the most critical locations. Because it's a school, it raises the level of the importance of the streets. So it'll be one of the first ones that it's addressed as soon as we address the fund balance in and of itself. Um, the other side of town, you asked about the reconstruction of the alley and everything like that. There were no taxpayer dollars paid for that reconstruction of the alley. Uh, the wrought iron fence was paid for by the guy that put up the sign. He reconstructed the alley and he also paid for all the color sites in the area. That was part of the negotiated deal with them so that we didn't have to spend our money to do all of those things. So we didn't spend any money for that at all. Uh, uh, not a dime. Um, the area that gets resurfaced over there, those streets and alleys that get resurfaced are done through, to uh, Trustee McGreer's point, uh, CDBG grant, uh, Community Development Block Grant, which allows you to use the funds to repair streets, sidewalks, alleys, and in some cases signage depending upon you know exactly what it is and street lighting you know all of these things to beautify blocks in areas where the per capita income is lower than the median income so if, if the census shows that the income in a certain area is lower than a certain level they provide it qualifies and they provide you money they the, the county will give you money to uh beautify the area to uh, uh maintain the area because they know that you're not getting the tax dollars to maintain it from that area. 
that's a double-edged sword because what it says is that we've got a, an area in town that's nearly blighted or got a, a low income of people over there. The good thing is that the other side of town, uh, you have people that have money and, and they have the means to be able to take care of everything and they expect to be able to have the streets and everything done. So it's a good and bad situation that you have there and you start the balance you get. And the only area in Broadway that qualified and I don't have the last census from Virginia. We, we were expecting that we may have gotten a larger uh, portion of growth who qualified based on the sale of property in town and what we think the income is and the amount of foreclosures. Hasn't happened yet. So we're limited to the area between 17th and 13th and between the expressway and Roosevelt Road. Those areas, those uh, uh, street repairs and alley repairs are paid through a grant and not through tax dollars. So just so that everyone knows, so we're not, picking and choosing where we do this is where we're allowed to do it. It's the only place where we're allowed to do it. Um, speed bumps, we've discussed it. Uh, there's a couple of different lines of thinking about the speed bumps, just like there were a couple of different lines of thinking about the cul-de-sacs in the area. The, the police and the fire were consulted as, as related to the cul-de-sacs. They weren't real happy about it, but they figured out a way to maneuver around it. And, and it's, it's provided a benefit because it's mitigated a lot of the traffic in the area because of the grammar school and the playground that's over there. And that particular playground has got a lot of issues going on with it as kids are in there late at night, larger kids, bigger kids create problems over there. Uh, to your point, Ms. Yancey, people out in the middle of the night, two and three o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the morning, things like that. When we put the quota section in, it, it, it reduced that by 90%. You know, it, it was amazing what type of when you live there. You, you I live right across the street from Homestella right. uh, Elementary School, and it's getting back quiet like it used to be. Right. some forty some years ago. Right. I mean, you still have you know kids uh, or young teenagers at the park or whatever, but it doesn't seem like they're as rowdy as they used to be. Uh, kids walking in the street. We have sidewalks. We're not there outside. Walk on the sidewalk, so, but it, it's, it's nice. So ha having said that, so we're limited in where we can actually do these items. And once we get uh, the funding corrected, we're gonna go and address that is. Just as you see us out, you'll see the public works guys uh, doing a concrete replacement. They go to the locations where the worst damage is, where there's slips, trips, and falls, concrete's broken up. We don't want people tripping and falling and getting hurt, trying to sue the village or trying to sue the person who lived there, whatever. So there's a pecking order on where we go first to, to do the repairs. We'll take an order of your street. I'm sure that uh, we'll get uh, the village engineer and uh, public works out there to make an assessment. I'm sure to be probably uh, up here to talk about this. Uh, as relates to uh, some of the other comments up here, uh, Let's agree we don't agree upon what actually went on and what transpired as it relates to funds and other things. Just know that we have an issue that's got to be addressed and we're going to address it uh, to, to the least pain possible to everybody involved because it affects all of us here. Uh, and the last thing that I got is I have a proclamation here and uh, it's for Ms. Rosie Thomas. Ms. Rosie Thomas has been a resident of the village of Broadview since, uh, I want to say 1961 or 62. Uh, Ms. Rosie Thomas just celebrated her, was it her 75th birthday? 75th birthday. And um, she worked in the grammar school, she drove a school bus, and she's still a resident in the village of town. Uh, she, she's one of the senior matriarchs of our town, and uh, if you don't know her, she's over on the uh, north side of Roosevelt Road, not too far from the uh, uh, Blue Nose uh, Tavern. So, uh, and here's the proclamation. Whereas, as president of the village of Broadview, it is my fundamental belief that the village should recognize and memorialize the contributions and achievements of its outstanding residents. And whereas Rosie Thomas has been a member of the village community for over 50 years, and whereas Rosie Thomas has been a devoted and loving mother to her five children, Dean, Lavelle, Bruce, Kent, and Dennis, and whereas Rosie Thomas played an active role in her children's lives, including serving as a Cub Scout den mother, and whereas Rosie Thomas has been an active member of the community, including working in the school lunchroom at Roosevelt Grammar School, and whereas Rosie Thomas has played a strong work ethic while driving the school bus for 38 years, and she also worked at Amphenol, which was a company in Broadview. And whereas Rosie Thomas is an excellent example for all village residents representing the importance of selflessly serving family and community. Now therefore, let it be proclaimed that the village president, Sherman Jones, and the village board of trustees do hereby offer our deep appreciation to Rosie Thomas for her years of service to the village community and wish her a very happy birthday as she celebrates her 75th birthday. 
Enter upon the records of the Village of Broadview, Illinois, this fifth day of August, 2013. Uh, I'll be signing this off on, and I'll be sending it to Ms. Thomas and her family uh, in a frame uh, that I'm just going to pay for the frame myself and just send it to Ms. Thomas. So, uh, that concludes my report for the night. With that, I'll entertain a motion to appoint the night's move. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee McGree, second by Trustee Aiden. All in favor to adjourn? Aye. Aye. All opposed?